Welcome back guys. Uh, in today's video we're going to look at how to uh, uninstall your gory folding propeller and make it look spiffy and shiny. As I'm sure you've guessed from the title screen, CLR does play a big part in uh, this whole process, but we do have to get that propeller off the boat first, and uh, a day like this is perfect for that. Yes, it, it is work, there's no question about it. But the good news is I like the work, so uh, happy to be here. Uh, just to show you, there's my boat there, tucked in uh, in the middle. All right, so we want to take this prop, um, looks like that, and make it look more like that. That's the point of this video. So uh, yeah, um, you might have seen this in my last video where I uh, gave you a teaser about what this one was going to be about. Um, I, uh, I like to get my prop nice and polished uh, for every season. Of course, it'll always come out of the lake looking um, looking a little worse for wear. <laughs> it's just There's no stopping the growth. Um, and, and the prop that you see there is after a season's worth of sailing uh, and it having been pressure washed. So first we're going to talk about how to remove these gory uh, folding propellers. They are, um, they are great um, propellers for sailboats. Um, they're supposed to give you an extra knot's worth of speed. <laughs> I don't know whether that's true or not because I've not tested my boat with a fixed prop. Um, but in any event, here, uh, here we go. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove the uh, set screws. There's uh, there's actually four screws that hold the pins in, which actually hold the blades of the propeller in. That's uh, those are six and seven that were highlighted there. Um, so you have to uh, get a number four Allen key and twist those out. And you'll see the the top ones are a little bit flatter, um, and but the bottom ones will have or the the inner ones I should say are are conical so that they can go into a divot in the pin and you'll uh, you'll see all that in a second now I'm not sure if this is unique to my propeller or not but for for my propeller the inner um, set screws are smaller than the the outer ones for whatever reason it all seems to work so I, I suppose that's right now with those set screws <clears throat> removed uh, we can get to work on removing these pins now to use that I use a uh, a hammer and sort of a striking tool that um, I try to be as gentle as possible. It does leave a, a small mark, but um, not, nothing to get too excited about. Now they should come out without applying too much pressure, and as you can see there, it comes flying out, um, and I of course drop the uh, blade on the ground, giving it a minor dent, but uh, oh well, live and learn. And obviously the other side is uh, is the exact same process. Tappy tappy and out it should come. Just be gentle and hold on to it this time. Okay, so here it is with the blades removed and you can see the shaft nut is in there and uh, that's the only spot on my boat where I get hard growth. Uh, there's some tiny zebra mussels that uh, always seem to find their way in there so I gotta dig them out. Well, I don't have to, but uh, I like to. So now to get the uh, shaft nut out, first you have to remove a set pin uh, that's uh, resting in a little divot. Again, lots of fail safes. These uh, props are known to come off from time to time, so uh, you appreciate all the safety that they build into it, or all the redundancies, I should say. Um, with that set pin out, you can now remove the uh, the shaft nut. That just comes out with uh, any old socket set. You can throw that in there. and. Um, apply a liberal amount of, uh, of torque. So here I just wanted to show you that little divot that the uh, set screw sits in. So like I said in my uh, previous video, I'm here to uh, make mistakes so that you don't have to, and here's one of them. Uh, I bought myself a four inch gear puller uh, to pull this prop. I normally borrow a, a, a neighbor's but I wanted to get my own and uh, this one didn't fit and here you can watch in real time uh, me realize that I'm an idiot and that I bought the wrong one and I'll have to go and get the right one sometimes you just have to know when you're beat And through the magic of television, here we are the next day, uh, having gone to the store and returned those puny uh, and obviously wrong 
four inch gear pullers for these much better and more appropriate six inch gear pullers. I always was more of a six inch man. <clears throat> now, since I take my uh, prop off every season, um, I don't have to struggle with mine too much. The, f the first time you do this, if it's been a few years, uh, you may have to apply quite a bit of force. Uh, I don't, I just have to uh, basically spin it and uh, off it comes. And you can see I can finish it uh, by hand, that's how, how easily it was coming off. Now the last uh, uh, part that you'll have to deal with is a key that sits inside uh, the propeller and that's what goes onto the prop shaft and uh, allows the torque to be turned into forward momentum. Uh, there's the, uh, the keyhole in the shaft. And as interesting as all that mechanical stuff is, I know why you're really here is the chemistry because that's the real magic. And uh, without further ado, here we are now back in the garage and uh, ready to uh, put chemistry into motion. Of course, the other benefit of uh, doing all this in the garage is it gives me an opportunity to give you an up close look of uh, what the six months in the lake will do to a shiny prop. Um, just to give you an idea also of, uh, of how great the CLR stuff actually is. Uh, spoiler alert, it's pretty great. And I should say this is not a paid promotion, but uh, hey, the good folks at CLR, uh, please reach out at your convenience. So with that yucky business out of the way, um, let's get to the chemistry. Here we are, CLR. I think this is available everywhere. It's certainly available in Canada and the US. So I like to apply uh, a four to one ratio of CLR to warm water. And um, then I'll let that sit, um, well, for as long as it needs to. Uh, because my prop gets cleaned every year, it doesn't have so much buildup on it, so one evening is usually enough. Uh, but you can see how right away uh, the CLR it goes right to work and starts to lift all that gunk off, and it, you can see it's bubbling um, as that uh, that organic material gets lifted off the brass. It's really quite something. Okay, so the next day, like I said, I uh, just leave this uh, for about 24 hours and the next day I can come back and just, just tapping it, you can see without me having to apply any pressure at all, um, all of the gunk has just sort of lifted right straight off. Uh, here it is after uh, being washed in some clean, fresh water. And, you know, it doesn't look too bad. It's got a sort of a patina look to it, I suppose, from where the, uh, where the organic material uh, had a, adhered to the prop, um, but compared to probably 95% of all propellers in the boatyard, that one looks pretty awesome. Of course, I'm not satisfied with 95%. Uh, I want to be more in the 99 percentile. Uh, so I, I have never done this before. Uh, so this was an experiment. I bought this Brasso and uh, applied it and tried to buff it with the Brasso. And um, I have to say it was uh, an utter fail. Uh, you'll see here with the Brasso, it just basically it dulled it. On the other side that doesn't have it, it's uh, got a sort of a deep luster. Was, whereas with the Brasso, it just was kind of a dull uh, shine. It's shiny, but it's, uh, it, it doesn't have any depth to it. So I wasn't satisfied with that. Um, there you can see it against the uh, the, the unpolished side and on the outsides um, you can just see how deep that that gloss is. I tried a few different things um, um, wasn't sure what to do tried it again uh, with the Brasso just by hand and uh, that didn't really do any better to be honest um, I, I really I, I gave the Brasso a good try but uh, it just didn't do it for me. Ooh. 
not to be deterred uh, I tried switching the buffer and um, just trying that first uh, without any polish or, or lubricant and, and that didn't really make much of a difference um, so uh, again undaunted I decided to try the uh, gel coat buffing compound that I use from Rayplex which is a local supplier and um, this is not a brass <laughs> polish this is for gel coat so uh, you know I, I'm, I'm going at this uh, again as a bit of an experiment but I have to say that that fine uh, rubbing compound actually did a pretty good job. It's, it's not quite as good as the polish that I'd used in the past, um, uh, but it's pretty, pretty good. I'd, I'd say we're in the 98th percentile. So Brasso, bad. Buffing compound, not bad, not bad. So um, having discovered that I liked uh, the, the way the buffing compound worked, I decided that I would just tackle the rest of the propeller using that. Um, and uh, I am pretty satisfied with the way it came out. I think it uh, it, it definitely looks a lot better than, uh, than most, let's say that. And I would say it's almost brand new looking. And so there you have it guys, this is uh, essentially a ringing endorsement for uh, CLR, uh, that's uh, such a great product, uh, should probably be sold in marine stores for $60 a gallon, <clears throat> don't tell them that. Um, and it's a, a halfway endorsement for a, a buffing compound to be used after the CLR, uh, it's probably not necessary. Uh, you're only going to see this thing while it's being lifted into the air and then uh, put in the water and then you won't see it again until it comes out um, looking awful but um, you know the fish will appreciate it and really isn't that why we do this <laughs> so thanks again for watching uh, please like and subscribe i really appreciate the support thanks guys see you later